We are here at the Duet board with... Hi, Tony from Duet 3D. Nice to meet you, Danny. So, we've been actually talking before about how to make a very cool product. And I thought the, this discussion that is quite technical, it's so interesting that I really want to share it with you guys. So, Tony, yeah. what I want to build is a 3D printer that can run at least 10 hot ends. Awesome. Well, one at a time. Yeah. But basically, it's like a tool changer, but yeah. you're just changing the hot end. Oh, yeah. with the filament so that there's almost no purging yes and there's almost no time needed for the swap yes and so for this i do have the design but i am missing the firmware that i need for my custom part in order to keep costs low for the thing i don't want to have 10 active hot ends yes because you would never use all of them and you would need like a huge board for that mm -hmm. so what i'm thinking there is a parking with 10 positions, yeah. but only some of them do the heating and the cooling and the measuring temperature and stuff. Okay. So while the printer is printing, it knows I'm going to need yellow next. And well, yellow is here, but there's no way to heat it up. So I'm going to pick it up, move it to a heating spot. It's going to preheat it. Mm -hmm. And by the time the, the printer finishes with the current color, yeah. this is going to be preheated right on time. It's going to pick up the current hot end, park it, uh, get the yellow one. Uh, plug it in and it's going to continue printing. Yeah, absolutely. And so something that uh, David's put into the next release of RepRap firmware, and it will still be a beta, very much a beta in the next release, is multiple independent G-code streams. Wow. Which you can synchronize as and when you need wow. to. Wow. <laughs> so so the, the concept for that is ex one of the use cases for that is exactly what you're describing. The ability for the printer to be printing while the tool management system is managing the tools. Yeah. Now, the way you described it is even more exciting than what I had in mind. I just had in mind initially something like an IDEX printer. It needs to do some purging and some preheating off mm -hmm. to the side in its space while the main print is happening. But there's no absolute, absolutely no reason why what you're describing couldn't also be done. So the idea is you would configure some of the axes to be the, what's moving around your, your hot ends as they're heating, and you would configure some heaters and, and temperature sensors or in the firmware. And because the firmware runs off G-code macros and it has conditional stuff yeah. built into it, mm -hmm. you can write, without having to, you needing to rewrite the firmware, you'll be able to write, uh, check this hot end, look at this, carry out this action, da -de -da. And This I, is awesome. Cool. And as I mentioned, the, uh, the firmware is open source, so if you do go, uh, if you do go, actually the firmware can't do this, then we can work together to, to, to extend the firmware to do what you need to do. So you don't need to start from scratch, you don't need to build the whole firmware. This is amazing. So let me tell you the boring understanding that I get from this, because I'm super excited, but maybe you don't understand why. It's very easy to do a tool changing if the printer is not printing while the tool changing part is doing its thing. So we're either printing or we're doing the tool changing, but there's no way until now to do both at the same time, at least not reliably. Or you need two control boards, which puts- That's exactly what yeah. I was going to do, but yeah. that's gonna make everything a lot more complex. Handling the communication between the two parts is like two completely different devices working together, right? For a normal board, I might be able to figure out how to hack it in a way so that both of the parts would work at the same time. But there's going to be a, an interface so that the user can handle the tool changing part and maybe work on the, like, solve some problem that arises. Mm -hmm. And for this, we would need a special interface. And I can't just add that into Marlin, for example. Like, I would have no idea how to do it. Uh, while Marlin is printing, also add some menu that does something else, some yeah. other place. Yeah. So the good thing about RepRap firmware and our user interface, which is called Duet Web Control, is that Duet Web Control is uh, it's effectively a web app, and it's written in you know standard web libraries. Mm -hmm. It's written in That's JavaScript. Good. JavaScript right now. The next mm -hmm. version, Christian's done a port, and he's moved it all across to, type, to TypeScript. Wow. So that I love TypeScript. You, it, it has a plug-in interface as well, so you don't you don't even need to re uh, sort of rework the whole uh, UI. If you want to write a plugin, you can write a plugin that the UI can load. So because I have a lot of experience with web interfaces, then I would be able to figure out how to add my own like custom tool yes. changer things. Yeah. So you could add your own tab 
within the, the user interface that was like tool change a tab and in that you can you know use the standard you may be familiar with things like view and things like that uh, babylon for the 3d visualization and all that you'll be able to do that within uh, within a plugin or if the plugin interface wasn't powerful enough for you because it's an open source application you can hack it as much as you like and and rework it but the other thing is this consume this this user interface is uses the api that we provide so you could decide, I don't like this user interface. I'm just going to use their API directly and integrate it into your own user interface. And, wow. and all of those options are, are supported depending on what, what works best for you. But I think from what you've described, starting with a plugin for this user interface. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds like a great start and quite easy. It's a great start. So yeah. instead of taking like three or four months for the first test, yeah. I could just try it right away. Absolutely. Almost yes. right away. Yes, absolutely. Awesome. Cool. And another thing that if we want to get really deep into the technical mm -hmm. details is the way that RepRap firmware, the way that RepRap firmware works is that um, you still change settings through G codes. Mm -hmm. um, and if you are a user and you want to get some information from a setting, you use a G code to get that back. You'd like, for example, what's my acceleration? I'm going to send M201. You're going to get back what the acceleration is. But if you, uh, if you want to programmatically work with the state of the machine, we give you an object model, you query it, you get JSON responses wow. back. And so you can, you can query the object model and your plugin can work around what the state of the machine <laughs> is and make all the decisions that you need to make. Awesome. So for example, in your tool changer, you, you want to know that that tool has got up to a temperature before the tool change can continue. You just you yeah. query the object model, say, what's my temperature? That's okay. exactly what they yeah, need. Exactly. Okay, now we go down a different route uh, to to do the tool change. So yeah, that's all. Wow, this this is amazing. I don't know how to show you my heart right now, how hard is pumping. Yeah. So something else that's really, uh, really good to talk about with the Duet 3 range is the fact that we have a CAN FD bus to allow expandability. So on your, uh, on your application, you might have one board running the printer and an expansion board running the machine. But that would, instead of having to connect back to some central server for coordination, it would use this CANFT bus to connect together. Yeah, just a few wires. Absolutely, just a couple of wires for data and power. And that allows us to build a, a, a distributed control system where you put the control where it works for you. So for example, on the tool head, you just have power and wire, uh, data running to the tool head and you connect the fans, the, ste the stepper motor driver, the hot end, the temperature yeah, sensor, yeah, yeah. the, the Z probe, the filament monitor, you connect them all into the tool head and that allows you to give a much more integrated and easier to wire system. What we've got here on this tool changer, what I've done is I've slightly modified the, the stock E3D tool changer. So what we've got here is a, a closed loop board running one motor, another closed loop board running another motor. We've got a tool board on this tool, uh, this tool here has another tool board. And I actually, just because it was really easy, I put another tool board on this axis just to run to run the A-axis. So it just allowed me to easily wire this, this system together. Awesome. Things that are important like heater faults or driver stalls and stuff, there's an event system. And, there, the, and the reaction to the events are customizable by macros, by G-code. So you decide what happens. So we just look at this. Uh, I'm just going to stall this axis. I've turned the current right down so I can actually stall it. Mm -hmm. It's only running about 400 milliamps. But if I stall the axis the first time, we've set it up to give you a warning. All right. Fine. Normally you'd want to stop it. So just let's stall it another time. Okay. Now we've got an error. All right. All right. And now let's stall it again. And you can. It's good. It's going to pause. And and this is perfect. Uh, but this is just the configuration we set up for the show. Mm -hmm. And it took Christian like a couple of lines of G code to just set up this uh, conditional system for for here. And I'm going to start the yeah. again. But yeah. For example, that dialog box is pushed that popped up, the text, the heading and the text and everything. You can customize That's everything. all configurable, not customizers and you need to change the web interface or anything. Mm -hmm. You just say the macro pulls this command. This is the header. This is the information. That like what's the, what's the workflow and yeah. what should happen roughly and it exactly. figures out how to do it. Uh, well, you figure out how or to I, give well, you the capability to, yeah. to figure out exactly what to do. Um, I, was, I was thinking about this because, well, my tool changer has a little swiveling arm or yeah. however yeah. Uh, rotating. Okay. Uh, it might it might crash into things. Maybe the user puts in their hand in there. Yeah. So we, uh, I want to have sensors there and and detect this kind of problems and stop and tell the user, hey, this happened. Yeah. Is it safe to continue or do you need to do something to fix yeah. it? Well, we're talking about closed loop motors here, but you may decide for your application that the closed loop motor isn't necessarily 
right? Yeah, We probably. certainly allow the stepper drivers, the tridynamic drivers, have stall detection. Mm -hmm. So you could set and calibrate the stall detection, and then depending on which motor stalled and how it stalled, that would be the diff you would handle that event differently. So clearly, if there's a chance that the user's got their hand in there, we want to stop everything absolutely immediately. Absolutely. So yeah, but that's configurable. That's awesome, that's awesome. Configurable. Thank you so much. I'm so happy I met yeah. you. So happy to meet you too. Absolute pleasure. Before we go, if people are interested in more information about your products, where can they find you? So yeah, the best place to find out about us is at duet3d.com. And I guess you're going to put a link in the description. Until next time, stay, stay awesome. awesome.